Okay, you may have seen this trend going around on Instagram stories for the most part, but it's true false. And followers of whatever account is posting about it will pose true or false questions and then whoever the influencer is will answer them. Well, I thought it would be fun to do that, like the hair edition. So asking, getting you guys to ask me your true false questions about hair. And I'm shifting it over to YouTube so I can make a longer video. And I also haven't been on YouTube for a minute, so I wanted to come back over here and say hey to all you YouTube subscribers or those of you that watch videos here. So I pulled these questions from my Instagram stories and I'll obviously post this video in stories, but it's gonna live right here on YouTube. Okay, the first statement was, you shouldn't wash your hair every day. And I am going to say false. You can wash your hair as much as you want to. There's nothing bad about washing your hair every day. Some people need to. Some people have a lot of oil production on their scalp. Some people use a ton of products. Some people just like the feeling of clean hair. So it's not bad to wash your hair every day. I would say my advice is assess as to whether or not you need to. I think a lot of people could go an extra day between washing and be really fine and satisfied with her hair, but they're just so used to the rhythm of washing every day because that was the norm five, 10 years ago, maybe even longer than that. But to sum up, it is not bad to wash your hair every day in itself. Use a good conditioner, use good products on your hair, and your hair should be just fine. Okay, the next statement was, cutting your hair makes it grow. And in a way, this is partially true, so let me explain. If you are trying to grow your hair out and you don't get it trimmed regularly, ends of hair are prone to splitting, and if you don't trim the split ends off, they'll just keep splitting up higher and higher. So in a way, it'll kind of counteract any time you've spent growing the length of your hair. If your ends are just splitting up, even though your hair is growing longer, they're just gonna, they're like counteracting the growth with splitting. So it is good to get your hair trimmed if you're trying to grow it out, to cut off any split ends. Now this doesn't apply to every single texture, everyone's hair is so different, but in general, split ends happen. And if you're trying to grow your hair out, it will help to just slice the ends of the hair off so you don't have it splitting up shorter. Sort of along the same lines, the other statement I got was, dry ends are repairable. It's really hard to repair split or damaged hair. It can be done to a degree, but it's never gonna restore the hair back to its original healthy state. It's like your hair is made of like three different layers. There's the cortex, the, oh gosh, the cuticle, there's something else. I'm, I'm recalling all of my uh, beauty school education. Oh, I can't think of it. Anyway, there's layers to each individual strand of hair. And once the damage, like if the cuticle, the outer part of the hair lifts and damage is done to the inner part of the hair, it's really hard to restore that. You can use products and treatments and all of those things to help condition the hair to prevent for further damage. You can soften the cuticle. You can do good things to your hair, but it's very hard to restore hair back to its like organic virgin state of health, if that makes sense. Dry shampoo is bad for your scalp. This is false. Dry shampoo is fine to use. If you notice irritation or problems with your scalp, you may wanna choose a new product, but dry shampoo in and of itself is not bad for your scalp. If you use a lot of dry shampoo, you're likely not washing your hair often, so the problem on your scalp could be from lack of washing. So don't tie any scalp problems in immediately with dry shampoo. Look at the full picture of what's happening. If you're not washing your hair as often and therefore using dry shampoo, you may have excess buildup of oil, skin cells, product, you name it, and that may be irritating your scalp. All right, the next statement is purple shampoo does work. This is true. Purple shampoo, especially if you're blonde or have lighter hair and you're trying to counteract any brassiness or yellow tones to your hair, purple shampoo really works. If you think of a color wheel, purple is opposite of yellow, so purple is used to counteract yellow tones. So they make purple deep conditioning masks, they make purple shampoo, purple conditioner, they make purple and even blue, add in like drops of color that you can add into whatever shampoo or conditioner you love. It really does help counteract 
the yellow or brassy tones in the lighter hair. All right, this one made me laugh. Side parts are canceled. No, they ain't, girl. Listen, do your hair however you want. I know it's popular right now to do a center part. If that works for you, great. If it doesn't, who cares? Wear your hair how you wanna wear it. They're not canceled. It is bad to brush wet hair. This is partially true. You have to pay attention to what tool you're using to brush the hair. Wet hair is more elastic and fragile than dry hair. So if you're ripping a brush through your hair from root to tip and it's wet, you're pulling on the hair a lot and the hair is gonna stretch with the brush because it's wet and you may result in snapping or snagging the hair. Conversely, if the hair is dry, you can just brush. I mean, ideally you would wanna start by brushing out your ends and then working your way up, but you can brush through and you know that the hair doesn't have as much give, so you're maybe, maybe not gonna to lead to as much snapping to the hair. So a better alternative than a brush though is a wide tooth comb so you can get all of like the tighter knots out slowly working your way from the ends up to the top of your hair and then being able to smooth through it. Okay, we're gonna end with this one. This statement is clarifying shampoo can strip your color. This is partially true, but not as much anymore. So I wanted to address it. Clarifying, sh clarifying shampoo, when it came on the market, was kind of known for that. And it was great for cleaning your hair of like a lot of oil. If you wanted to remove some of your color, you were told, use a clarifying shampoo, it'll strip your hair. So clarifying shampoos have come a long way and a lot of them now are color safe. So just read the label, maybe ask your stylist. Clarifying shampoos in general work harder to clean the hair shaft off. So it could lead to a little bit of color stripping, but it depends on the color you have and it depends on how long it's been since you've had the color. So there are a lot of factors that play into it. So if you've just gotten your hair freshly colored, I would avoid clarifying shampoo. Um, but if you run into issues of your hair being really oily or you have well water or anything like that and you need to use a clarifying shampoo regularly, talk to your stylist and see if they can recommend something that's color safe because a lot of those exist now. Okay, I lied, I'm gonna add one more in. This statement is, your hair can only get to a certain length it wants to be and then it cannot get any longer. For the most part, this is true. When your hair is being developed in your mother's womb, uh, it goes through three stages and most people's hair gets to a certain length and it just stops because the hair can't grow any longer. So that's why extensions like temporary extensions are great if you want to add length to your hair. But if you're trying to grow your hair super long and it just does not seem to be budging past your shoulders, you may not be able to grow it long. Circling back to my first question I started or my first like statement I started with to answer true false, get a regular trim if you're trying to grow your hair out and see if your stylist notices any growth. If they are watching your hair growth, they may be able to tell you, you know what, I don't think it's gonna happen for you or they may be able to see it is growing. It may just feel like it's growing really slow. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap there. I hope this was enjoyable. Maybe you learned a thing or two about some common hair thoughts, breaking them down as to whether or not they are true or false. There's a lot of fun content over on Instagram stories. So if you're not following already, you can find me at k8 underscore small things. I'll put a link below this video here on YouTube so you can come follow along on Instagram.